Chapter Five. I tell Andrea. And so my new life began. Every day that week, I went to work. Every night, I waited outside the house at number seven, Felker Utsa, and then I spent time in the bar. And every night, I had the same dream, and woke up feeling afraid in the dark. And if I went back to sleep. I had the dream again, and if I didn't go back to sleep, I lay in bed in the dark, trying to understand what was happening to me. And every morning, I was more and more tired, and I wasn't nice to Andrea. I felt terrible because of the dreams, and because I was so tired. And I felt worse, because Andrea didn't know why I was arriving late every evening, and I didn't tell her the truth. Things at work became difficult. I couldn't think about the important things I had to do. And even worse, the next day, I argued with Andrea. She couldn't understand why I had to go to the Gergay Utsa bar every night, and of course, I felt I couldn't tell her. And then, because I didn't feel good, I started drinking more than the two glasses of wine I'd had the first two nights. I started staying in the bar much longer, because I was afraid to go home and try to sleep. I was afraid to dream the same dream. On Thursday, when I came home very late after drinking too much, Andrea had already gone to bed. On Friday, I was late home again. But when I got in, Andrea was waiting up for me. She looked very unhappy. Her face was white, and her pretty blue eyes were red. She'd been crying. John, she said, as I got some bread and cheese to eat. What is the matter? I said nothing as I ate. John, she tried again. You must tell me what's happened. You've changed completely. Please talk to me. I looked up at her. This wonderful woman I loved so much, and saw how much I was hurting her. I felt so terrible that I started crying. She put her arms around me. And talked to me quietly, as if I were a little child. Then she took my face between her hands. Tell me, darling," she said quietly. "I want to help you." And so, I told her everything. The words came out quickly. And when I'd finished, she suddenly laughed, and laughed. It's not funny," I said angrily. "No, darling," she answered. "It's not funny at all, but I feel so happy." She stopped laughing, and continued in a serious voice. "You see." I thought you'd found somebody else, another woman. After that, we held each other, and kissed for a very long time. Then she made me tell her the story again, very slowly. She kept asking questions, 
trying to get all the information about every part of it. Right, she said. Tomorrow is Saturday, and neither of us is working. We'll go round to number seven Felka Utza and start asking some questions. I'm sure there's a very easy answer to this story. I felt so happy. She was so sweet and good, and I was sure that everything was going to be all right.